Hello, lovely people out there. I'm Kate Hill, and I am here to give you the best unbiased and honest commentary about the property markets, along with some really awesome hints and tips as we go. Today, I have got a national house price update for you. It's a bit of a longer one as we look at property markets around the country, so stay tuned. Now, before we get started, I wanted to ask everyone today's question. Where are you buying at the moment? Are you buying a house in Ballarat, a new build in Melbourne, or a unit in Canberra, or a house up in Brisbane? What are you up to and why? I would really love to hear your stories. And just really quickly, I recently gave one of my webinars with Terry Ryder. We discussed the prospects for a nationwide property boom for this year and beyond. It was an open forum. We got lots and lots of questions from you lovely people out there about specific areas and where the markets are heading, which ones will show the best growth and which ones to avoid. So if you are in the market for an investment property at the moment, then this video is a must watch, you guys. Okay, so I am being asked a lot at the moment why so many property markets are booming. Well, there is pent up demand. People put their lives on hold. They haven't been anywhere. People have been saving money and or paying down their mortgages. People have cash and equity. The pandemic has accelerated the desire for home ownership in young people, and they are out there in force looking to get onto the property ladder. Property is seen as a very stable asset class, especially when you watch property markets hold so steadily during the course of a global pandemic, whereas share prices plummeted briefly. Property doesn't react that quickly, so there's a real reassurance out there that property will continue to be stable and to be steady. There are other factors too, of course, but these would be some of those major drivers of growth in some of our property markets at the moment. We are finding that real estate consumers across Australia have started the year with abundant optimism about prospects for the real estate markets. However, there's also a real lack of stock out there at the moment. When you've got that imbalance between supply and demand, it will drive up prices. And Australian housing values have reached a new record high as values continue to rise across almost every broader region of the country. So let's go through some of them. Canberra. Canberra property, like Adelaide, rarely gets a mention in the national media and has been the quiet achiever of 2020. In our very turbulent year last year, Canberra has emerged relatively unscathed. While market activity did pull back during the peak of restrictions earlier in the year last year, successful containment of the virus meant an element of normality returned quite quickly. So having a larger public sector employment base as well as a private sector reliant on government dollars has meant minimal job losses compared to some of the other cities. Some government departments have grown given the dramatic change in certain resources needed during the pandemic. Buyers have also been spurred by cheap credit and government incentives at a time where I've said that the market has a real lack of stock. In late January, Comsec published the latest edition of its State of the States report, which ranked the ACT as the number two economy in the country. The ACT consistently ranks among the top three economies in Australia and continues to excel with low unemployment and solid population growth. Canberra was the only capital city to deliver growth in house prices in every single month of 2020 and finished the year with an annual rise of about 8.5% according to CoreLogic and 9.1% according to Domain. House prices set a new record high at the end of 2020 and unit prices are also edging closer to a new price peak. House prices surged 6.4% over the December quarter to $855,000. This has produced the steepest annual gain since early 2017 at 9.1%. Unit prices are only 1.3% below the record high achieved 
at the end of 2019. Following a 3% quarterly gain, they are now at $485,000. The rate of house price gain far surpasses units. Over the past five years, house prices have risen almost 32%, while growth in unit prices has been less than half that. Some areas have increased new development supply, which will weigh on capital growth. Moving on to Melbourne. House and unit prices rebounded over the final quarter of 2020, pushing both house and unit prices to new record highs. Melbourne markets bounded back really quickly following the release of restrictions after the second wave lockdowns. Domain has reported that attendance at open homes in the four weeks to January the 17th were 14% higher than at the same time last year. Also from Domain, its quarterly price report published at the end of January shows that house prices and apartment prices overall were higher in the December quarter than a year earlier. House prices were up 3.9%, apartments up 2.5%, an amazing result considering everything that Melbourne has dealt with in 2020. But the really the most stark evidence was provided by the quarterly figures. In the December quarter, the median house price rose 5.3%, while the unit median price increased 4.4%, the highest among the capital cities. Buyers and sellers have returned to the market with rampant enthusiasm. The easing of restrictions marked a return of buyers and sellers. Buyers have responded really quickly as pent-up demand was unleashed. Homes newly listed for sale are being absorbed very quickly by competing buyers. Market activity pushed late into December and the January selling season has begun sooner and much more strongly than we would normally experience. The traditional holiday slowdown really was almost non-existent this year. Despite the economic shock of COVID-19, Melbourne's housing market has defied the odds. First home buyers are back in the market using all those government incentives, low mortgage rates, and a much deeper savings pot as COVID restrictions reduced discretionary spending. Change over buyers, upgraders, have been enticed by cheaper credit and altered wish lists post that lockdown. The traditional first home, heartland and lifestyle locations in Greater Melbourne continue to be top performers. Up to Brisbane. We've said before that South East Queensland attracts the most interest from interstate migrants. They are attracted by more affordable house prices, really good job opportunities and improved lifestyle factors. Post lockdown pandemic, and as our borders are opening up a little bit more, major building companies are saying that the level of inquiry for new homes in South East Queensland is phenomenal, with a mass domestic migration apparently underway to the Sunshine State. Relocation companies have experienced a 400% increase in demand for quotes from people migrating from Sydney and Melbourne. Access to tradespeople has come under real pressure amid this building boom. New home sales are up 80%. The level of inquiry in local property has been extraordinary. Demand for renovations is unprecedented and unlike anything many up there have experienced in years. Brisbane markets are performing well on price growth, with three quarters of suburbs across the metropolitan region recording an uplift in their median house prices in 2020. In the most recent quarter, 76% of suburbs had some level of price growth, with inner city unit markets still struggling with high vacancy rates. Growth has been less prolific in that unit market. 56% of these suburbs with unit markets have lifted their median unit price in the past year. House price growth has been spread across the greater Brisbane area, but the upper end of the market has been leading the way. The housing market in inner Brisbane, in contrast to the unit market, is generally traveling quite well. Some regional Queensland markets have been among the best in Australia on price performance over the past 12 months. Literally dozens of locations throughout the state have recorded double-digit growth 
in their median prices, led by the Sunshine Coast, where several upmarket suburbs have grown more than 30% in the past 12 months. Queensland has been ranked ahead of New South Wales, but behind Victoria in the latest Comsec State of the States report, which rated the economy fifth best in the country. Queensland led the nation on total value of home loans, up 65% on the long-term average. Queensland had the fastest annual population growth in the country, up 1.58%. The report ranked Queensland third best in the country for retail spending, up 18% on the 10-year average. And as we move across to Adelaide, it will be a recurring theme of this video, folks, but Adelaide house prices also ended 2020 on a new record high. House prices are now 6.1% higher than last year. It was only three years ago that Adelaide was the second most affordable city to purchase a house, but it is now the fourth. Adelaide's unit market ended the year in a strong position at a record high 350,000, producing the steepest annual growth out of all capital cities, 13.5% higher than last year. This is the strongest annual growth for units in 12 years. There has been minimal disruption to Adelaide's property market through the pandemic relative to other capital cities, highlighted by the strong end to 2020. South Australia's economy is soaring, according to the new reports, ranking the state's economic health at its highest position in years. The state's population is surging and that is having payoffs for the economy. Comsec's State of the States report, released at the end of January, I've been quoting it throughout this video, ranked the local Adelaide economy equal third with Victoria, its highest placing in more than a decade. Population growth is clearly an important driver of the broader economy, especially retail spending. And housing demand, ABS statistics for the June 2020 quarter, showed more people from interstate moved to South Australia than left for other states. It was the first time that that has occurred since 2002. The Comsec report also showed that the states and territories less affected by COVID-19 were rebounding really strongly, unsurprisingly. And South Australia has been a standout in terms of controlling the pandemic. So in terms of price performance, Adelaide has been one of the most consistent markets in Australia. In the 10 months of 2020 that followed the onset of the pandemic, Adelaide recorded house price growth in nine of those 10 months. Two thirds of Adelaide locations recorded growth in the past 12 months. South Australia's recovery from COVID-19 has been hailed as one of the best in the country. An economic analysis by Deloitte Access Economic predicts South Australia's jobless rate will drop to 5.4% by 2025, and it hasn't been that low since November 2018. The business outlook says that South Australia has weathered the pandemic storm remarkably well to date, and its recovery theme has been jobs, jobs, and more jobs. Currently, South Australia has one of the lowest jobless rates in the nation at 6.2%, which is really no mean feat, given it was the highest before the pandemic. All of these stats bode really, really well for the property market. Moving way, way across to WA and Perth. So this is probably the most buoyant Perth market that we have seen in several years. According to Terry Ryder, there are currently almost 60 rising suburbs across the Perth metro area in terms of sales volumes, with the growth areas dominated by affordable markets. And so much, really, so much has changed here, including a big reduction in vacancy rates and a very busy activity from first home buyers. According to a recent ABC News report, properties across Perth sold in November at the fastest rate since 2006. Vacancy rates are almost at record lows. In recent years, vacancy rates have been quite high, been on a bit of a roller coaster over there, but they have dropped to near record low levels, leading to some predictions of 20% increases in rents in 2021. 
Both the Real Estate Institute of WA and SQM Research figures show the vacancy rates have now dropped to around 0.9%. At the same time, lending figures reveal a significant drop in loans to investors for properties in Perth and WA. And this has been a real key factor in the low supply of rental properties. There are currently 53% fewer properties listed for rent than at the same time last year. Most research sources have Perth now displaying price growth again in annual terms, including the latest figures from Domain and CoreLogic. But it's really the result for the December quarter, really, that is the most significant. The Domain data published late in January shows the median price for Perth rose 6.3% in 2020, followed by a 3% jump in the December quarter. The median apartment price rose 4.4% in 2020 after a 2.3% increase in that quarter. Now those figures indicate that all the positive momentum that has been building in the Perth economy and the property markets is now at last going to be translating into meaningful growth in prices. For much deeper insight into what is happening in Perth and some forecasts, have a look at my most recent Perth video right here. Okay, bringing things back across to Sydney and New South. Since the pandemic began, Sydney really has confounded the pessimists with its price performance. Most suburbs had a growth in their median house prices in 2020. Apartments were a little less prolific as we've reported before, but nevertheless, eight out of 10 suburbs recorded median price growth. The overall average for the Sydney metro area was a really solid rise in the median house price and many individual suburbs did really, really well. In fact, a number of suburbs recorded median price growth above 20% in the past year. Now, in spite of the problems with high vacancy rates and lower buyer demand because of a lack of travellers and students, for example, some suburbs in more central Sydney have also had big increases in median prices as well. Again, for a more detailed look at what's going on in the Sydney market, have a look at my recent Sydney video right here. Now to finish off everyone, always remember, different areas do different things at different times for different reasons. If you are investing, then not every area is suitable for everyone. It's not a cookie cutter approach here. So we will keep you updated on all the comings and goings of the nation's property markets throughout the year. Please don't forget, just quickly subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, tell me where you're buying and what's going on, hit the like button. I do really appreciate that support and I will see you soon. Bye.